All right, tonight's uh, topic is going to be how to take the golf course from the driving range to the golf course. It's Quick Fix Golf. This is our webinar. Why? Because there's snow up to our behinds. <laughs> so we got nothing else to do. Yeah. But at the same time, it, this is going to help your golf game because this is the kind of stuff we can cover now that you don't really cover in a one on one golf lesson on a driving range where you're going crazy over someone's swing fault and trying to beat that into submission here we're talking about how to play golf today and the topic is you know how to take your golf swing from the driving range to the golf course mucho importante you can't blow the first three or four holes and then the rest of the day you're working your tail off to try to make up for the mess you made you got to get around started the right way and there's a way to prepare to do that properly here's the hard part most people are lucky to get to the golf course in time for their starting time much less get there early and I understand that, but um, unfortunately, I didn't invent the game. The game goes the way it goes, and it requires certain preparation in most cases. Now, it's not that you can't, you know, jump out of the car, grab your sticks, and run, and go to the first tee and actually have a good day. Doesn't mean that can't happen, but um, it's just not the way it goes. Just not the way it goes. Now, let me see if I can, uh, let me see here. You'll have to put up with my, this is a lot of technology for a Cuban. I want you to understand that. What is Quick Fix Golf all about? Improve your golf game for yourself, not by yourself. I'm right here with you, holding your hand all the way. We build your golf game from the ground up, so we're not just talking about the swing. We're talking about all kinds of other stuff that has just as much an influence as your swing on trying to get you to play better golf. All right. When you're building a golf swing, I'm just going to go over this real quick before we, 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 we go into the topic because it, it always relates to it. I got to hammer this all the time because I want to get it in your head. When building a golf swing, it's club face, body path, club face, body path. If the club face is messed up, all the rest of it gets messed up because it tries to react to that club face. Right. As you know, Keith, with Jessica, we're doing when she had a real strong grip. So then she had to build all kinds of things in her swing to accommodate the strong grip. So it all starts there. Now, what to do the night before? Probably no one <laughs> that I know even thinks about what they're going to do the next day when they're going to play golf and how to play each hole. There's so much information out there today that you can get your hands on to make yourself a decent game plan. Um, it's, it's a matter of how serious you want to get. You know, I'm going to I'm going to show you what I would do, and what I do and what I know. You know, anything I do, I've stolen it from a lot of really good players that I got a chance to play with. So, you know, it's not that I made this up. But if you look, for instance, in Pendleton's case, and we used to have these books here for sale that were fabulous. You couldn't even hardly give them away. That tells you right there where people's heads are at, you know, but they'd rather have the little, you know, everybody's buying these little um, mechanisms there that you looks like uh, binoculars on one on one side of a binocular for Colonel Clink <laughs> on, on one side and you can get the distance that's true but that's only part of the picture that's point A to point B as you notice players on tour have in their back pocket a little book well I uh, got a chance to see Jack Nicholas's book one time, and his caddy used to make it for him. It was a caddy that, if you know, if you're as old as I am, remember the old days, he had this caddy that had like an Afro haircut. It was an Italian guy. What the heck was his name? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Just had it on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, he would draw it, and he was like an artiste. And I mean, the three dimensional drawings he would make of the green were huge. Like you see up here, you see this is sort of three dimensional right there. Angelo, that's it. Yes, you're right, Angelo. Out of way. Who was that? Who is that? Angelo. You're exactly right. Thanks. Nice guy, Eddie. Oh, that's what the NGE is. Captain. Almost a captain. All right, Eddie. Good. Oh, by the way, I saw your boss on TV last night. He was on um, Eddie, who's on the line right now. He's with um, uh, Rick Edelman. So if you're if you're ever considering anything for your for your retirement portfolio, what have you. Uh, Eddie's a good guy to talk to. I'll give you his email anytime you want. Um, and he was on TV with Dr. Uh, what the heck's his name? Dr. Who? Dr. Khan? Ah, Dr. Oz. That's who it was, Dr. Oz. 
I got the peanut gallery in the background here that could help me with this. It was on there, you know, so um, it's good, good, sensible investment. Anyway, you have to have also good, sensible preparation before you go play. Same thing for you, Eddie. If you, you know, you don't go to an airport to land the airplane and not have that little book in your hand that shows where the runways are and everything else that goes on. I mean, you're just not going to do that, right? At least you're Asiatic Airlines. <laughs> but anyway, you, you have to make a game plan to say, how am I going to play this hole? And this book was terrific because you could sit there the night before and you look at all the distances that are on there. So it could show you from this black tee right here to that spot right there is 191 yards. See? Or, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. You know, no, yeah, this is going this way. So that's probably 191 from here to the hole. Although, I don't know. No, this is going backwards. Anyway, we'll figure it out afterwards. But you, you got all the distances you need, and then you got to say to yourself, look, I'm hitting a three-wood because I'm not taking a chance to hit my driver hitting into those bunkers. Now there's a bunker over here that we didn't have before. See, now there's a bunker there. So you'd have to take that into consideration and see where's the numbers here, what's the numbers there. How far do I need to fly to get past there? And make yourself a game plan and say, here's where I'm going to move the ball. I'm going to move the ball from here to there, from there to there. And how are you going to do it? With your club face. Club face in the path. You have to have the nose of the airplane facing the runway. If you don't do that, the plane's going to flip over. See, so... You, you've got to control the club face and you've got to say, how do I control my club face and how do I move the ball from point A to point B to the next spot? All right. Now, let me take. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Get to the golf course early. Right. Here's a special report. Let me switch screens. If you go to. QuickFixGolf.com. Where is it? Here we go. You can download this report. If you're a member, if you're not a member and you're listening in today, just let me know and I'd be happy to, to mail it to you. But I come over here where it says members. I click on members. I'm going to put Joe at golfer.net. This is a fake offer. You put in your password. How come the fake guy is always a Joe? You know, you ever notice that? Hey, Joe. Hey, Adrian. Hey, hi. Come on. Must have Come on. There you go. So then your name would be right here. And if you go right here to special reports and click on that, you'll see a special report right here that you could download, print it out. Uh, I know it's right here. Hold on. We've got so many of them. That's golf clubs. That's short game. Your shoulders. Uh, there you go. How to take your golf swing from the range to the golf course. You click on that. I think a lot of people just don't go back into this area and read this stuff. This is this was actually placed on the blog, but it was actually taken from uh, a special report, which I can you, know, you can take this and you can print it out and read it. But also what it will talk about is, as it says, if you're killing on the range, everything seems perfect. You're convinced you're going to have your best round ever. And then right on the first tee, you yank it out of bounds. You know, it's, I'm not saying that when you prepare properly, that might not still happen. But your chances are better. You know, everything in this game, nothing's for sure. It's your chances are better. See? So here's, here's what I would do first if it's me. I get to the golf course about two hours before I'm going to play. That might be real excessive for you guys, but even if you can do an hour, it, it's, it's good. It's least helpful. Spending a little time the night before making your game plan is very helpful. So you already show up as you're driving to the golf course. You're thinking about, you know, I'm going to hit this club here, this club there, this club here, this club there. 
you know, you, you sort of have a you, you have a rhyme or reason of what you're trying to do and why. When I get to the golf course, the first place I go to is the putting green and I start putting four foot putts. Now, not everybody does it this way. And the problem is most golf courses are built the reverse. Most golf courses, the driving range is closer to that first tee than the, or the practice putting green is closer to the first tee than the driving range. I think one of the reasons why they do that is because of sound makes a lot of noise. Everybody's on the range. They're yakking. They're carrying on. The putting green's quiet. But I really think that's built the wrong way, because you want to start from the whole back. So I start putting four foot putts. If I can't make those, there's no use me even doing anything else, even warming up the rest, because what's the difference? If I can't get the ball in the hole, that's the whole idea of the game. So I hit four foot putts. Uh, for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I actually spend that much time. That's not going to be there two hours ahead. And then I'll start rolling 25 foot putts and I'll roll, you know, I'll vary the distance. I'll roll 125, roll 140, roll 130, roll 140, roll 125, roll 150, roll 120. And a different distance every roll. And I watch the ball roll on the ground. I want to get a real good feel for how fast that green is moving today. And one of the problems in a golf tournament like on tour, there's so many guys walking on that green that usually they'll be a little bit faster than the ones on the golf course. Because it's just so, you know, they've been, you know, pressed down so much that everybody walking on. But I'll do that and then I'll throw a few chip shots in there, maybe throw a couple bunker shots in there if they've got a bunker that's close. Uh, but not too many. And I do all my short game work there. I'll figure I'm going to hang around that putting green for about an hour in 15 minutes. Then I might take a break. I go inside, go to the bathroom, whatever it is I got to do. Then come back out to the range, figure I got a half an hour left. And that half an hour, I'll just take out the six iron and swing real easy, real easy. I don't care how far the ball goes. I just want to get all the pieces to feel like they're working together. And I'm looking at the ball flight and I'm saying to myself, is my club face getting back to where I want it to be? Because if the ball's curving at all, then I got a problem with my club face. And I better figure out quick, what is it that's going on? Is it my grip? Is it that I'm rolling the club open on the way back? One way or the other, one way or the other, I don't have the, I don't have the, the, the club face where it ought to be. Then what I'll do is I'll start hitting. This is a Bill Melhorn used to ride my tail a lot about doing this drill. If you don't know who Bill Melhorn is, uh, Ben Hogan said he was the best ball striker ever. He was like Byron Nelson. He won, I think, instead of 11 tournaments in a row, like nine. Um, I used to take lessons with him and he would make me hit every one of the clubs the same distance. So I'd hit my driver 120 yards, make it land at exactly 120 yards, hit a four, I make it land at exactly 120 yards, take my eight, iron, make it go exactly 120 yards and feel the rhythm in the swing. Anybody can just haul off a swing as hard as they can, but that's not the whole idea. See, so when you slow down your driver so much that you want to hit it 120 yards, you can really feel all the pieces and where they're going. All right. Then alternate clubs. I could hit a four iron and then I'd hit a wedge. I'd hit a five iron. I'd hit a gap wedge. I hit an eight iron, hit my driver and alternate the clubs back and forth so that I can get the tempo and the rhythm going. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get one loosened up. And secondly, I want to get the pieces to feel like they're all working together. All the gears are working together. When you swing too hard, too fast, you can't feel that. Okay. Then play the first five holes on the range. If I know I'm playing Pendleton, for instance, first hole's par five, I tee up a driver and I, I just picture the fairway in front of me, I hit it. I get out my three wood and I hit it like I'm trying to go for the green and two. Okay, I'm a little bit short, so I take out my uh, gap wedge or something, I hit a little Shot about 70 yards, 60 yards. All right, there's number one. Number two, I know I got to keep that ball left, so I hit a tee shot and picture a lot of trouble on the right, make sure I keep it left, and et cetera. So Hogan used to say he played all 18 holes on the range, but, you know, he, he had to get there really early. <laughs> and he was an absolute fanatic. But usually I can play the first four or five holes, and then I'll try and finish up with a tee shot on number one again. When I look at my watch and I look at the clock, usually they have a clock on the tee. Um, and I know I'm about five minutes before my starting time. Boom, I tee up the driver and I pretend like I'm on the first hole. And boom, I rip it. Hopefully I hit it flush. Because if I do, that's it. Grab the caddy, grab the clubs, go. Go to the first hole. Because that's the last thing that was on your mind was how you hit that tee shot on the range. And now you're going to carry that over 
to the first tee. If I hit it crummy, I tee up another ball and hit it. Because I want to have a nice flush tee shot before I walk over to that first tee. All right, now let's see if there's any questions here because I've been talking for a long time. Who's got a question? Anybody? Hello? Turn on your microphones. No questions? Did everybody go into a coma? Hello? Nice guy, Eddie, typed something for you. Oh! How about fatigue? Well, um, it's not a matter of hitting a lot of balls, Eddie. It's a matter of taking your time when you hit a lot of balls. Uh, not a lot of balls. The, the balls that you're going to hit. You don't need to hit a ton of balls before you play. And when you're doing these drills, such as hitting the driver only 120 yards and et cetera, you're not swinging real full. You know, you want to warm the engines up, just like you did with an airplane. You know, it goes. You don't just haul off and start swinging. And I'll say that guys go out to the range and they start hitting the driver. So what the heck's the matter with you? No. Uh, you know, my first, I was taught by Dick Farley to always start off with a six iron because he said that's the first club that you actually swing. You don't really swing the seven iron on down. And that's, you know, that's the way I was taught. I'm not saying that's right because uh, Bobby Watkins, for instance, he starts off with a sandwich. All right, so because it's the heaviest club in the bag, so you really feel the head and you swing it real slow. So if you're swinging slow and you're taking your time between each shot, you're not just popping the balls off like most people do. Uh, you're not going to get fatigued at all. You know, it's not volume. You know, I take a lot of time between each shot. I hit the shot, I, I, I look at the ball flight, and then I stand back and try and remember what it felt like when I hit it and say, okay, what do I find? Is there anything wrong here? Probably like you doing a checklist on a check ride before you take off. I mean, you're not just going to take the airplane and go down the runway. You know, you're going to go through the checklist and say, hey, is there something wrong here? I'd rather find out while I'm on the ground. So uh, it's really doing the same thing. Is there something wrong with my swing today? And it can happen. You wake up one morning and all of a sudden you're hitting everything on the bottom of the club face. What the heck's going on here? It happens to the best players in the world. And that's what's hard to get across to some amateurs is they go, well, it was hitting so good yesterday. I'm going to hit the credit today. He said, well, look in the newspaper. You see guys that shot 66 on Thursday and Friday they shot 74. How? What happened to them? And they're the best players in the world. So you, you got to, you know, the guys that are really good are the ones that are able to nip problems in the bud quickly. They don't let it get away from them. And I think that's one of the biggest problems Tiger has now, that he lets the problems get to him now. From watching him up at D.C. and watching him bail that drive out like he did on that one hole there, uh, Gene Wakuri went with me, and we we went up there. And, I mean, I just looked and I go, what is, you know, something's wrong with this guy's head. It's in his head. He's not thinking like he did when he was younger, when he was very positive. Any other questions? Hello? Oh, let's see. Let's look at this. Here's somebody else. Sean, do you recommend any tools like Game Golf to help with planning, review, and your round? Boy, funny you mentioned Game Golf. Does everybody know what Game Golf is? Hold on here. I've got one in my car that I got from the PGA show last year, and uh, it's still in my car. <laughs> I still haven't used it. It's still in my car. Now, um, here's the only problem I've seen. Oh, wait, what's this? Ooh, maybe they added a feature. See, that here, here was the feature that I was didn't like that they didn't have. Off the tee. Get rid of those dreaded tee shot jitters and stripe the ball down the fairway. Oh, well, no, 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 still not. Uh, the, the problem with all these things is actually doing it. And it's so labor intensive and time consuming, you know, to, you, you got to be almost a left brain engineer type that's willing to count, you know, every little bean and blah, blah, blah. I, for me, it always drives me crazy. And the thing I didn't like about this 
is you have to get to the ball in order for it to register. So you hit a shot, you start at point A and you tap, you tap your belt. Let me see if we see the product, how it works so people can see. You got this little thing on your belt right here, see? And you got a little thing in the, in the butt of your golf club and you tap that before you hit it. So now the GPS knows where you are. Then you hit the ball. When you get to the ball, you tap it again. So then it knows where the ball landed. What I would like to see rather would be on the driving range, be able to hit some shots. And after you've hit about 10 six iron shots, I could show you the ball dispersion and where they all are. Well, you can't do that with this. But I'm going to find something that will do that for this year. Let's see. Bobby, since rounds played alone are no longer counted. Ooh, wait a minute. What is this? Do you recommend any tools like, okay, that's the one thing we have there. Hold on. Somebody else has got some. I got it as a Christmas present. <laughs> well, who who was that? I make sure I don't give it to you next year. <laughs> but, but you understand what I'm saying? In other words, I, I've got maybe out of everybody I deal with, I've probably seen two students that have this. And they love it. They love it. I've got it and never even used it yet. Um, but all these you know, stat tracking programs that everybody has tried. Lots of companies have tried. And, you know, maybe for the first three rounds, you start, you know, diligently putting down every little thing that happened, how many Sandys, how many putts I had, how many this, how many that. But, you know, I don't know how long you're going to keep that up. It's certainly very, very useful if you did. So I wouldn't discourage somebody from having this. It's a couple hundred bucks, I think, is what they cost, unless that was my wholesale on it or something. I think it was one... Or 149 or something I had to pay. I think they sell for 199. All right. Now, since rounds played alone, oh, they don't trust you, huh? Are no longer counted for your handicap. Are there any good games or drills we could do while playing a round alone since it's basically now a practice round? Perfect question. Because I've got the absolute perfect drill. Perfect. Given to me by Chico Miartis many, 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 many years ago. I wish I'd have done it more. Um, what Chico would do to me, we would go out. I don't know if you know who Chico is, but Chico used to make the tomahawk putter. And I used to make tomahawk putters in his little factory at night, and he would give me lessons. And uh, he, uh, he finished tied for first loss in a playoff to George Knudsen in the LA Open. Chico is a pretty good golfer. Um, and used to teach at a Bayshore Golf Club down in Miami Beach. And Chico would take me out to North Miami Beach. There was a little nine-hole golf course at a park. It was a city, little city nine-hole course. Probably a little nine-hole course, but it was all right. But the idea was there's nobody there. And he would take me there in the afternoons, and we'd play nine holes, and he would make me play the worst of three balls. If you can do that and break 100, you're kicking butt. Because you hit a drive right down the middle. Perfect. Tee up another one. Hit another one. Not bad. A little bit. Yeah, not as quite as good, but it's in the fairway. Now you hit another one and you knock that one off on the fairway bunker. You got to go play that one. Then you get in the fairway bunker and you hit one out. You hit pretty good. You hit another one. That's eh, sort of crummy. You hit another one really crummy. Now you got to go play that one. And so on. Even when you get to the hole and you're four feet away, you made the first one. You made the second one. You missed the third one. You got to do it again. Let me tell you, you got to go someplace late in the afternoon where there's nobody around because, you know, it's going to take you three hours to play nine holes easy. But it will really teach you that rhythm, tempo, balance is key because hitting one really good shot don't mean crap. You got to hit three in a row. And I'm telling you, it is the world's greatest drill. It will really get you to swing within yourself and in tempo and in rhythm. I don't know of any better on the golf course drill period. Anywhere, any place, anytime. It, that's number one. And why it's not more popular, I don't know. Maybe because Chico's dead now, so now I can't tell anybody else. Just me. Any other uh, any other questions? But now, I guess so now they don't trust. If you're playing by yourself, they won't let you put that in your... Okay, hold on, hold on. For me, how I want to track how far I hit a club on the actual course, which is why I like the idea of the product. I need to learn when it is better to hit a smooth six instead of a hard seven. For example, you can catch them on eBay for about 99 bucks. Well, that shows you uh, because you can get it on eBay for 99 bucks now. That shows you that it's not doing so hot. 
I just got a phone call for them because the PGA shows next week and I'm thinking of just not going to heck with it. But um, they're saying they've added these new features. I'll try and find out what those features are and let you know. But certainly if you buy one on eBay, it's not going to have that unless it's a software feature or something. They can actually download it into the existing unit. Um, and yeah, that's that that. With time, Sean, it can help what you're thinking, you know, but learning to know when to hit a smooth six or a hard seven is going to come with experience. And right now, while you're still trying to get your swing um, down from the inside and over, I would keep my mind on that 1000% until that's done. In fact, I'm going to be uh, later today, I'm going to scan in the article from Sergio Garcia, which shows him saying and showing him what he does, saying that his dad taught him to pull down on a chain on the way down, to feel like you're pulling down on a chain. And uh, that's 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 the move you need. That's the move all of us need. You know, that's why Davis loved the third. He said, my dad told me to pound a stake in the ground. Take the butt of this golf club right here and you just go straight down. Bang. Before the chest gets a chance to find out what happened. Any other questions? Oh, Zep, Zep Golf is accurate for swing playing. All right, Zep Golf. Let's see what that looks like. Let me see if it's. Let's take a look at that. Oh, welcome to ZepGolf.com. <laughs> no, oh, maybe it's got it. Hold on. <laughs> that didn't take long. I'm telling you one thing, the golf business is in crisis. Here is Zep.com. Now, why wouldn't they own ZepGolf.com? What does it matter with these people? Are they stupid? I'll buy ZepGolf.com this afternoon and sell it to them. Okay, golf kit. Let me see here. It's got a... And this will show you, let's see, bat mount, golf mount. Oh, so it goes on the hand right there. Yeah, I've seen some of those. Uh, I don't know if this is the one they were selling with the iPhone, but I remember AT&T was selling something with the iPhone, and then they gave it away for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having it. There's nothing wrong with having it. The only thing that this thing can't tell you is that because you are out of path, what do you got to do to change it? Well, that's my job. That's why you got me. So... There's, there's nothing wrong with having anything. You know, feedback is good. I don't I wouldn't tell somebody go buy it tomorrow. But if you got it anyway and you saw it, and you sort of liked it and you said, ah, and I think this this is where the future thing is in golf. Anyway, all these little gadgets, that's what everybody's buying. They're not buying a new set of clubs. They're buying they're buying this. Um, so, you know, whether it's accurate or not for swing playing, Eddie, I don't know. I would assume it is. You know, it probably is. If, if you say it is, I know you know what a glide slope looks like. So, yeah, it, you know, it probably is. I don't know. Never used it. Uh, Mike Starr, if you know Mike, uh, he comes out on a Wednesday workshops in the morning. He's got something. I don't know if it's this one or one like it. And he's got he's got uh, a program like that. He puts the thing on his glove. Looks just like it. Um, and it does a swing play. Any other questions? Good questions today, you guys. But I guess you'd rather write them in the box, which is all right. Nope. What was nope for? Uh, well, you're saying no, but does it, how does the swing jacket work as it is a good tool for the swing plane? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, oh, it works with the Android and iOS. Yeah, so that, that might be that same one that Mike Starr has. I don't know. I'll find out. But the swing jacket, here's my problem with the swing jacket. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's somewhat similar to what Bill Melhorn tried to do, what Bill Melhorn would do way before you ever saw any of these belts or anything. I'm talking 1970. Um, he had a, a big belt that looked like it was Jackie Gleason's belt. You know, it was probably the biggest belt you could find. And he made more holes in it. And he would strap you in from the elbow so your elbows couldn't leave your body. And he put that strap on and there was no elasticity to that strap like the straps today that stretch. You were you were you were tied in there big time. 
and he'd make you swing and hit balls. And the whole purpose was to keep these arms and hands in front of your chest at all times. That's the whole idea. Now, the problem I find with it, which is why I don't use, I've got about four or five belts. I, you'll notice I hardly ever use them in a lesson unless I, I just have no other choice. Is because, you know, if the item does it for you, then when you take it off, you go right back. It's like a woman putting on a girdle. I mean, she's still fat. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you know, just when you take it off, you're right back to where you started, where if you put like two towels under your armpits and you say, hey, I'm going to swing with the two towels. Cesar Sanudo used to do that. I don't know if you know Cesar. He used to hang out with uh, Lee Trevino. Um, and he was a pretty good player. Uh, all these old players I know, they're all probably dead. But he would keep the elbows and his arms together with a, with a towel put the towel around and you'll get the same effect and you're going to save 99 bucks. You know, that's the problem with most of these gadgets, which is try I've always resisted selling many of them because you know, you use it for a little while. Next thing what's in the garage collecting dust and you just spent the money where on tour, I'm telling you, the guys don't use this stuff. They'll use a towel. They'll use their club head covers. They'll take the club head covers and stick them between their arms and hold those in. So then you have to develop the skill to hold it in it isn't that the shirt's holding it for you. Hmm? So that's my take on uh, on the swing jacket. I, I wouldn't buy one of those. Um, if you already have it, you got it. I mean, you know, it's, you're not going to die. It's, use it. See what happens. But then try weaning off of that into putting two towels on your arms. Any other questions? Hello. Any other questions? Well, I guess that's it then. Hope you learned something today. Remember, you got to get to the course early. In fact, let me see. I'll make sure I got everybody here. Here's Eddie, Jessica, Dave. Okay, Dave. I see Dave Gigliotti. Okay, so I'm going to send Dave. I'll send Jessica. I'll send... Eddie, Sean, which Sean is this? This is Sean, Sean Ryan. Yeah, and Tom Will. I'm going to send you guys all that special report. I have it in another format besides the blog, and I'll email that to you guys as soon as we're done. How to take your golf swing from the course to the range, all right? All right, gang, hope you learned something today. Thanks, easier. What's this? All right. All right, gang. If any of you want to come back, we'll be we'll crank it back up at three o'clock with another topic. I forgot what the ones at three o'clock, but I'll get ready for it now. All right, partner. Thanks. Thank you, Bobby. Hasta luego.